This is an image I shot several years ago. Um, at the time, I liked it. Uh, looking back at it now, I see there's things I could do to give it a little bit more punch. And I'm going to show you how you can use that to create just a few simple changes that really give this image a lot more detail. Uh, the first thing I notice about this is that it's uh, kind of monotonous in terms of color. Her is about the same color as the background, and her hair is just a little bit uh, darker version of that. Um, her eyes have a small catch light in it, but it's not, they don't kind of command your attention. Um, and then just a couple small tweaks here and there. So um, I edited this one just a few minutes ago, and that's what I got. So that's to give you an idea of where we're going, and now I'm going to show you how to get there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and reset that so we're back to the original image. Uh, this one uh, at the time, I this in JPEG, so there's not any fancy raw editing or workflow here. Um, first thing I want to do here is fix the color. It's a little too yellowy for my taste. I'm actually going to grab the white balance dropper tool thing and click on the white of her eye. Um, most of the time, this tends to favor blue a little bit too much for my taste, um, but it's a starting point. So I'm going to kick this up just a little bit more and the greens. Uh, with the green and magenta side, you have to be real careful, particularly with a white person. Um, because too much green and they start to look a little sickly. Too much pink and they start to just kind of, I don't know, look constipated or something. So, uh, that looks decent so far. Um, next thing I do is tweak the contrast. Uh, you'll notice in my histogram here, um, I'm not really having any pure whites or pure blacks. Uh, so I'd like to punch up the contrast a little bit here. And I'm going to show the clipping by hitting J. And kick up the blacks just a little bit. We don't want it too dark, obviously, but we want to just kind of stretch that tonal range just a little bit. That looks pretty good to me. Um, next thing we want to get rid of these blemishes here. I'm going to use the spot removal tool. pretty good to me. There's a little funky something here on the eye, or on the uh, nose rather. Get rid of that. And that looks good enough to me so far. And here's where we had the original and this. Um, only other thing I want to do so far is uh, give her eyes a little bit more punch. Uh, to do that I'm going to use the adjustment brush. Um, what you'll want to do is change the feathering so that there's not a whole lot of... You don't want a sharp line, you want it to be at zero, um, but you don't want too much thing to make it look unnatural. So, I don't know, a third of the way up is probably pretty good. Um, and then just make sure it matches the size of her iris. And... Give it a click. And same thing on the other eye give it a click. And I know you're thinking, well, her eyes are darker now. We're going to fix that in just a second. Quick note about the adjustment brush tool. Make sure the auto mask option is deselected. Um, occasionally I'll use that, but most of the time I just don't think it produces very aesthetically pleasing results, particularly when you're working with someone's eyes. So the first thing we want to do is give the eyes a little, have them be a little more captivating. So we're going to bring up the exposure a little bit. Um, I'm actually going to go a little bit too much because the next thing I'm going to do is take the contrast and push this up considerably. Um, what this is doing is this is making the catch light stand out a little bit more. Um, <coughs> excuse me. However, the contrast slider tends to make your colors a little bit darker as well, so that's why we pushed up the exposure a little bit more, and that might be just on the verge of too much. Um, another thing I want to do to this particular image, and I wouldn't normally recommend this, um, is I'm actually going to throw some blue color in her eyes largely because it'll go really well with kind of the other warm tones image and it'll really balance out her shirt very well. So um, I'm going to come over here to this color option and kind of pick a bluish color. Starting to get a little too green now. You know, let's just get that one and go from there. Um, the original image, the original uh, color is still shine through, so I bring down the saturation, then her eyes get really blue. I don't want them to be quite that blue, so I'm going to bring this up just a little bit so that we get some of her actual natural eye color in there. And I feel like that's a little bit too much on the blue, so I'm going to bring down that saturation just a little bit. And 
that looks pretty good to me. I could finesse this circle because it doesn't um, it extends above her eyelash a little bit. For this one, I'm not going to worry about it because I'm just trying to get the concept across. Um, and I think we're pretty good. Um, so just a few adjustments there. Um, for this particular headshot, I might come in here and adjust the sharpness a little bit because I know this was with an old camera that uh, I know from experience now that it doesn't always take super sharp photos. I don't think you're going to see a whole lot of change on this video by the time it's on YouTube with the video compression and all that, but to my eye here at computer, about a third of the way up on sharpening, I couldn't go any more than that. Um, looks pretty good, gives the image a little bit more crispness. So that was what we started with, that's what we ended with after just a few small tweaks here in Lightroom, and there's your before and after. So. Hit up StephenElliott.com for more workflow techniques and tutorials, uh, and be sure to leave any questions you have in the comment section there. Thanks.